Uh, sometime in, I think, 89 in America, I saw it in a shop. It looked really interesting and different, and I didn't know exactly what it was. That day, I kind of was just into the set. It was in you made me realize, actually, when I first used it, because I'd used the Roger Mayer Octavia, and this, uh, I was really into the Octavia effects and stuff like that. Um, there wasn't many around in those days. And then when I got the Fender Blender, it was like that, it was doing that stuff. It was richer and I could do other weird stuff with the guitar that seemed to react to. For quite a long time, I just used it to make a huge ma massive noise, basically. But it, it, a very interactive noise, that's, that's the thing. But when we used to do that, we made me realize thing really really reacted to how you played it was like really playing sound in a way that it's, it was very uh, very rewarding I think it started the idea, I was in over in California, and, and Jason, I don't know what your, his job description exactly would be, but he interfaces with the artists. He just said, if there was any pedal that you, or any idea or anything that you never did or whatever, and I said, well, actually there is, which is the SAG kind of thing. I think Fender got the idea of reissuing the Fender Blender. Jason said, would you like to um, you know, work on that and incorporate that idea? And I was like, yep, definitely. I think it could work really great. Stan basically works as, as, as a designer in Fender. He designs a lot of the pedals there. I was describing things, you know, describing the Fender amp, the, the tweed amps, where they break up in a certain way that's very rhythmic. He kind of invented a circuit, and it was immediately really interesting. The idea was I wanted something that really reacted to because how you played. That was the key, and I wanted to be able to dip and really, really go. Anything that you see anywhere, any pedal has side control, it's very subtle, and this is the opposite. They said, and anything else you want, Any, anything, just if you can fit on, you know. And I was like, really? Okay, cool. I just would like to have the, uh, the octave kind of thing going on, which I use a lot, you know. Uh, very subtly. So when we were designing, we were focusing on the other stuff. And I noticed that when we pressed this thing, it was like, that's weird. We were boosting the volume and, and cutting all the high end and mid range. So it was turning into this kind of really middle thing, which is again, interesting. I was like, I don't, I don't think that's right. And they were like, no, it's definitely right. And so we've checked our, checked the, you know, the schematics and all that is correct. And I was like, okay. I got worried because I was like, well, it doesn't sound like mine. It's not doing what mine do when I do that. So I kind of mentioned it a few more times. I, I sent mine over there and they realized that um, the circuit was uh, wrong. So the reissues from the, the 2000s were not correct, but now it is. Thank you.
The recording that I've been doing recently, I've been using it by itself. Instead of it being flat, it's like it takes on this three-dimensional thing because of the side control, pretty much, you know. This brings this kind of movement and feeling into things. Because it's interactive with what you're playing, it's also interactive with the pickup volume, you know, and everything else. When we're with humbuckers, and it's going to react very differently to one with, you know, single quotes. You know, some jazz masters and Jaguar, where it reacts differently to each guitar. It's a very much a very interactive pedal in that respect. It doesn't take what you got and just throw something on top. It's just, it's, it's very much working with what you're giving it. Some of these like parts that I'm playing, you, you need this to, to make it sound like that. Do you know what I mean? Like to try and imitate that would be nearly kind of really hard. You know, I need some studio equipment actually to do it using expander and compressor effects. You know what I mean? This has that quality. You know, and all of those things are extremely dependent on the, of course, on the input. I was showing Jay Maskus, and he could do things with this that I can't do because of how he plays. Because I was trying to imitate it last night, actually, and I was like, hmm, interesting. Even though it's capable of being a complete mayhem device, you know, it really responds to playing in a big way. So, you know, different kinds of players are going to find also, actually find it as a different kind of pedal. Like people that you would might imagine would have no interest in something that's essentially a bit on the brasher side. It's actually really subtle. It can do incredible subtle things, you know. There's a booklet inside with a sort of story about the Blender and my story in relation to this. I've signed the booklet myself for each one. It, there's a fun element to it. I was a big fan of Fender Blender and you know, obviously use Fender stuff a lot. Having the opportunity to design something as well, yeah, it's great.